Thank you so much, Kelly. Um, hello and welcome everyone to the Human Powered in Society Embracing session of Transcending the Crisis Virtual Conference. Um, my name is Denise DiPiano. I'm an HR leader and catalyst that values today's topics and integrates them in HR practices and respect human dignity and achieve business outcomes. Um, I'm very excited about today's conversation as we explore, share, and learn from each other's perspectives, wisdoms, and, and experiences. Um, I am thrilled to uh, have our next uh, guest, uh, Dr. Dana Klesanen. Um, and uh, Dana is a psychologist, futurist, um, designer. She is the founder and CEO of the Evolutionary Guidance Media, where she works with clients across sec sections in the areas of evolutionary design. Uh, I'm sorry, evolutionary systems design, uh, strategic foresight, social impact, and media design, uh, to name a few. Uh, Dana's transdisciplinary research explores the future of media, the evolution of heroism, and the anti-fragile mindset. So welcome, Dana. Hi. Um, so you had authored a, um, an article, The Anti-Fragile Mindset, um, Why Resilience Isn't Enough in the Face of Global Pandemic. Um, so can you tell me from, or tell us from your perspective, what is an anti-fragile mindset and how is it different from resilience? Well, first off, I want to say um, thank you for having me and um, it's great to join this conversation. Um, when I started, yeah, when the pandemic started, I, I started to think, you know, um, with the blog, what could I contribute that might help um, people think about how to um, respond to what they were seeing around them at kind of unprecedented um, shutting down of, of society um, around the world. And, and um, Taleb's work on the anti-fragility anti um, came, came into my mind and I was thinking about, okay, the anti-fragile mindset is something that people could really use right now during this time because the anti-fragile mindset, again, um, I know um, some of the people who have been on the previous call have, have heard from Paige discuss what the anti anti-fragility is. And so this idea of instead of responding to things in, in a way that, you know, you easily break um, to go beyond that into something that when it's stressed becomes unbreakable or, or much stronger. Um, and so I started to sort of think about what kind of um, characteristics and qualities um, made up that type of a mindset. And of course, I began by just looking around and seeing how were people responding. And in that blog post, uh, one of the things that I was referencing was the fact that around the world, people were responding with acts of, um, you know, they were trying to get together even though they were separated, right? So they were people who were singing on rooftops to bring, um, to lift the spirits of those around them. There were people playing um, like, ping pong or tennis right outside their window. Some of you have probably seen some of those images. And so actually what I, I, I did immediately was I thought um, I want to launch a survey and find out, you know, how act, what character strengths are people using? What will people say they are using? Because in fact, what they're using uh, to get through this and, and survive and thrive on the other side will in fact be the character strengths that we need in order to live in, um, from this anti-fragile mindset. So um, I, am I able to share my screen or is that possible? You should or, be able to. Um, let me see. I wanted to share okay. this slide from the, um, uh, let's see, if I hit share screen, you're probably gonna get my whole screen. Um, you should be able to select which screen you want to share, Dana. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah. That. I just don't want to get in, uh, turned off here um, when I hit that. But okay, sorry guys, bear with That's me. That's okay. <laughs> That's um, fine. This one is the one I believe. Let's hope so. Um, let's see. 
Oh, perfect. I was going to ask you if you had those, the results of the survey. Um, well, this is the main one that I really wanted to share during this conversation. Okay. And these are the top three character strengths that, oops, go back, that people are say that they're using to get through this crisis. So we have perspective, humor and playfulness and gratitude. And as you can see on the graph over there, um, this is out of 30 character strengths that have come up as the top. And I think that what is um, really interesting about this is, is, I mean, perspective is number one because perspective again is gonna come back to this idea of the mindset. So what mindset are we approaching this from? Um, and that's all about perspective taking, right? Um, so the next one, humor and playfulness, speaks directly to the things that I had mentioned in that blog post actually prior to the, um, to the survey. And that would be a kind of a playful and humorous approach to just to this. Um, we also see gratitude coming in a close second. And with gratitude, again, people were looking around and feeling grateful for what they did have. And um, instead of focusing on the negative, focusing on the positive, I mean, there's many more there. Kindness, obviously, and love. If you look at those together, you can see that makes up a large percentage of what people were using to get through the crisis, if you combine them. Also, spirituality or sense of, of purpose is another one. There's one other thing I wanted to share that I found interesting was um, one of the questions, has the threat of death from COVID-19 made you rethink how you want to spend your time or live your life? Um, interestingly enough, I mean, the, the majority said yes, and then plenty of other people, you know, weren't sure, maybe. So if we combine those who say yes, and maybe, uh, that's a large percentage of people who are actually thinking um, you know, of this crisis as something that might help change the way they live their life. Um, one of the character strengths they wish they had more of in order to implement such a change is creativity, um, which I'm gonna come back over, stop the screen sharing. Did that work? Yeah, it did. Okay. That was great. Um, and so that, that's why I thought I'd like to um, sort of focus the bulk of, of this conversation then on creativity, because it does seem like to me that that is one of the, when we think about um, the, the general conversation of anti-fragility, the diamonds often used um, to explain that because it's under a lot of pressure and through that pressure, something creative emerges um, in something strong. Um, and when we think about the pressure that's being applied on us from the pandemic, if we can think about how can we use creativity and how have people been using creativity to get through this crisis? I feel like it's a very actionable thing that we can bring into our lives. Um, so, yes. So, uh, so, so if you're not if you feel like you don't have that creativity and you're not creative, how, how can you um, kind of gain that, 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 that skill? How, how, how can someone gain that? Well, when, we, when I was first thinking about this conversation, I had wanted to speak about um, biomimicry mm -hmm. and, um, and rewilding. And those are basically saying, get back in touch with the natural world, um, in short. And so I think that a lot of our strength of creativity does come through interconnection with the natural world, um, that we have so separated, our, uh, so many of us have separated ourselves out from the natural world in a very unnatural way, because this is Every breath we take, in fact, is a reconnection with the natural world. We can't survive without, you know, oxygen and our atmosphere. And, but we don't think about that often. Um, and if we, for example, implement a mindfulness practice in which we just pay attention to our breath and recognize that through our breath, in fact, we're connected to everything there is, that is one way that in indirectly, we are going to facilitate creativity. Um, it might not seem obvious, but I do think that anyone who wants to um, support their creativity 
that that's a good place to start with, with a mindfulness practice, specifically one that is on the breath and just recognizing that connectivity because through our interconnectivity, we recognize that we're not alone. And, and I think a lot of um, the things that cause us to feel stressed, oftentimes depressed, stem back to this idea that we're alone and that in fact, that's a fallacy. I'm just curious if in your research regarding creativity, if people had found that they were more creative um, when they were collaborating and, and with people, or did they find that they really needed to kind of be in their own um, environment in order to really kind of be created, creative? Did, did your research touch on that at all? My research hasn't touched on okay. that, but what the creativity research would suggest is that, in fact, it would be a healthy dose of both of those things. Um, so oftentimes we find that the most creative people, in fact, are able to spend time alone. Um, but one of the reasons they're able to spend time alone is because ultimately they have a lot of inner, inner strength. Uh, they're not looking to the outside uh, for I don't know, praise, adulation, they're just creating from within themselves. And so that they are in fact able to, let's say, be alone, keeping that caveat that I just mentioned that in fact, as long as we're breathing, we're really never alone. We're never separated from our source. Um, and so, but, and then I will also say that in a balance to that, um, we often see creative, you know, when, when teams get together and we create together, right? That that can be even more powerful mm -hmm. than someone creating alone by themselves. So I'm a big um, I'm a big proponent of, of collabor collaboration. Great. Is there um, something in nature that you can say? You know, if you look at whatever it might be, whether it's the forest or, or an insect or so something in nature that you've said, this is a perfect example of creativity? Oh, there's so many things. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I generally, I, 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 the, the bees are coming to my mind, right? Because of the fact that the, the pollen, the inner activity between all of the, the flowers and the the flowering trees and plants um, is, is a creative act that then results in, let's just say, something that's even edible for humans, right? So that's a very large pattern. But generally, I like to look at um, the mycelium and um, underneath the forest canopy that is doing this quiet work, um, but that in fact, upon with which everything depends. So I think that creativity doesn't have to be loud. Creativity is something that can be, oftentimes is taking place sort of under the surface. Um, and that is why um, we often hear stories across history of people who made, um, who were studying a problem or challenge and they found the answer in a dream. Um, so their unconscious was work or subconscious was working on this and it bubbled up through a dream. And so in a way that's the same sort of, or idea of that mycelium working away, um, but contributing to everything. And, um, I don't know. Great. Okay. Um, so we do have a couple of questions if you, I know that I want to be mindful of time. So, um, let's see. Um, so I had wanted to know if there was a breakdown by gender, race, ethnicity um, you could offer regarding the chart or geographical area. Um, I am actually working on pulling all that information together in a book <laughs> and I will um, be providing it. But um, there was, I think over 33 uh, people who responded from over 33 countries, I believe. And the, I think the gender, a break. It was, I think, like 60-40 approximately. I'm, I don't have that stat in front of me as far as it was about 60% female, 40 male. I mean, but, you know, with some, un, you know, um, unspecified genders or 
choosing not to uh, specify. Okay, good. Um, so I, I do I do want to just go back for for one minute from a sense of um, the the graph itself. What what can we what lessons can we learn from that? From you know uh, perspective that perspective is the the had the most response and you know kindness love if you look at that right um was was another one um, what what lessons can or or are you interpreting those uh, responses i again i think that that's one reason that i decided to bring this into this conversation today because the anti-fragile mindset is itself a perspective and so i think that the lesson or the thing that we can take from it is to to look at ourselves and be self-reflective of what what perspective are we approaching this with um, any challenge but um you know this i know this session was convened because of covid and all of the challenges that have come from it so that the idea to just step back and say okay what perspective am i applying um, and then think about the fact that we might be able to choose this anti-fragile mindset as a choice. Okay. Um, so we have another question as well. Um, hello, Dana, when considering the traditional understanding of stoicism, could you, would you consider that stoicism is evolved through anti-fragility? Um, to me, stoic, stoics build from resilience, have a veneer of strength, but are more vulnerable to stress, but anti-fragile Stoics have developed an inner strength through, uh-oh, it went away. Uh, well, I think that the answer to that would be yes. I think that there, that, that is an evolution of the Stoic um, mindset or philosophy and that it's in process, definitely. I mean, yeah. Um, the next question is, uh, daisies would be an element that come to mind that can show how weather is like they open when it's sunny and close when, when it winters. Um, how can someone channel their creativity outside of meditation and connecting with nature and even more in a fast paced environment? Well, that's a great question. I think that, you know, in the creativity literature, again, that we have what they talk about is like a capital C creativity being stuff like um, the arts, the general way we think about it through music, through painting, through theater, through film. We think of creativity expressed in those ways or, you know, scientific discoveries or whatnot. But then we also talk about the small C creativity being like everyday life. So how you prepare a meal, how you dress, how you um, set a table, all the, just the, the general common things of life, but approaching them with this creative mindset so that in fact you are flexing your creativity muscle. So you're bringing it out um, in what your lived expression of yourself. Okay, great. Um, all right, so we have about 10 minutes, so I, I wanted to just be mindful of that. Um, you had talked a, a little bit about um, kind of that uh, rewilding. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think of, of that rewilding and the, and the ecosystem and how people are going back to their physical workplaces. Um, and how, uh, how can we use rewilding in the sense of um, reacclimating to the physical workspace, which is going to be radically different for most places, um, and kind of using that um, rewilding theory to kind of help us understand um, and reacclimate to 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 the I don't want to say the new normal, but to whatever lies ahead. That's a great question. Um, I mean, the the main answer to it would be to just try to create time in our day where we are interacting with nature more than we were before. Um, 
because we need it more than we did before because we're under more stress. Um, and even as we go back to work, in fact, one could think of that as even more stressful because we, in multiple states around the United States, the case count is going up. So we're being asked to come back to work when we know in fact that it's a dangerous situation that we're going into. So if we're going into a dangerous situation, then to build strength within ourselves and, and apply this rewilding idea, we would need to reconnect with it. And that could just be something like going for a walk before work, taking a break at work, having employers say, please go take a, take a break, you know, mm -hmm. spend time outside. I mean, of course, everyone doesn't have access in the same manner, but most people even in cities do have an access to a park. Um, and I would suggest that employers sort of factor that in and actually encourage people to take maybe a longer break in a park. Yeah, I, I think you and I had had that conversation about just um, where we like to center ourselves and going outside um, is just uh, kind of crucial um, and getting back to nature and just taking a breath again, right? Just breathing and getting, you know, centering yourself so that you can then um, kind of confront whatever's in, in front of you and, and, and deal with it in the healthiest way possible. So great. Thank you so much. Um, so we're coming close to, to the end. Um, wanted to ask you if you can share with us um, one or two, um, one or two things that, that uh, people can uh, implement in their life um, at, that, immediately that's Im impactful um, that can um, really help them uh, through this this time and, and beyond and uh, and and just really help them with uh, achieve kind of that that more of an anti-fragile mindset well I think the three that we've covered that I most recommend would be the mindfulness practice so and and tied to the breath um, and taking um, time outside, that would be those two. I mean, that, well, that's the rewilding tied into um, being, being outside and creativity. So those three things cluster together because through, through any one of them, you can enter the other. You know, if we engage in, in some type of creative practice, maybe this is a time to take up something. A lot of times there's people who have been wanting to learn to play the guitar or start singing again or dance. I mean, these are things that people can, can do for themselves. And now with the internet and being able to just download or be online and take classes. Um, and so many people are offering classes and in, in things, even, even at no cost, people can certainly avail themselves of, of flexing that creativity muscle. Right. I, 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 um, I find that um, a lot of people are reconnecting um, because they, they, although it's everyone's working twice as hard and, and, and uh, have a lot of stress because of, you know, their situation and trying to work from home with children and parenting and, and parenting maybe elderly um, folks, but there's, there's a such a, 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 a thirst and an insatiable desire to connect again that people are instead of texting calling yeah. you know to hear a human voice <laughs> that's true that's very true so yeah. yeah i think it's i think those are i think sometimes we look for this large um what can we do when the answers are usually sm smaller they're there you just have to kind of look for them and and recognize them and we don't necessarily always recognize that so and thank you for we don't often take them seriously i think a lot of people you know hear oh meditation's good for you or you know mindfulness practice is good for you being in nature is good for you or engaging in creativity is good for you but to actually implement that in our lives that you know requires effort and, and sometimes we think, especially if we're, you know, feeling challenged that, oh, we don't want to take on one more thing. But perhaps if we do take on that one more thing that in fact is going to help strengthen us and help us develop that anti-fragile mindset, in fact, um, it's not going to, to be a, 
a hindrance. Like we're not going to, once we do it, we're going to actually get benefit from it and feel good about it. So, yes. yeah, yeah. I, I agree. And that, that, that sense of, um, you know, whether it's even being connected to the community in a different way now, because again, you're, you're home and you have that, that, that uh, flexibility to do that. Um, I think it makes you feel so much better too, to, yeah. to, to help others. Right. Um, it really just uh, gives you that, that sense of, of well-being. So. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for, for um, again, um, your, your contributions and, uh, and your time. Is there anything else that, um, that we didn't get to that you would like to talk about? We have a few more minutes left. I just want to be, um, ask you that. No, is there any, was there any other question? Um, let me just see. Oh, is there a link for the study someone had asked? Uh, it ha I have not, uh, there, there is a, it's still live that study. Um, and if someone wants to participate, they could, if you go to my blog at psychology today, you'll see that I think the last blog post that I posted was the one about the survey and you could actually take the survey still. I haven't closed it. Um, as, as I said, I hadn't planned to even talk about it today, but all of a sudden I thought, you know, it does make a lot of sense because the, the qualities people are using to get through this are in fact the qualities that support an anti-fragile mindset. Yeah. I, I, um, it's interesting because I would have, quite honestly, I would have thought humor would have been higher up on, on the list. Oh, well, it's up there, though. Yeah, it, it is. I just... Um, you were in place 29.3. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. It's just one of those things that probably if I took that survey, it would have been like, that's one of the yeah. things that, <laughs> that gets me through, <laughs> definitely. You have to find the humor in things, uh, <laughs> for sure. So yeah. um, let, me see, let me see if there's any other questions from the audience. Um, someone just made a comment about saying that the suggestions that you're making are important and timely, um, particularly about the rewilding, less uh, screen time, more tree time. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, Joseph. That's, that's yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> Very good. Oops, sorry about that. That was me. So, okay. Definitely the screen time, you know, has gone up a lot and, and some for some in some cases, because, you know, we're having to work on, you know, yes. on our devices um, at a distance and stuff. But in general, we've also been, you know, scrolling more to see the news and the updates and all those kind of things. And yeah, in fact, that comment was right on. We need to take ourselves away from that when we're not having to, you know, be doing it for work because yeah. it's putting more... Um, yeah, stress in our bodies. I know for my for for myself and some of my my family and friends because we're in New Jersey, which has definitely a, a, a been at the one of the epicenters of the um, COVID nineteen um, that we had to just stop turning off all of the news and the updates every single day. It was just so depressing. Not that you want to um, you know hide, um, but you know that it's happening. I just don't need to hear twenty minutes You're of what's going on. Yeah, not yeah. a constant. Not a constant, anyway. exactly, <laughs> exactly, very, absolutely. So so we are at the top of the hour again. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate uh, the conversation and um, hope that, uh, that there was lots of good things that people can take away from there. I think that there was. I think it was um, very uh, practical and uh, can be implemented. So thank you so much, Dana. I appreciate it. Thank Kelly. you. Thank you.